another huge patch is hit and with it lots of new changes specifically we're gonna be taking a look at Nilfgaard now Nilfgaard their archetypes didn't really change they still have reveal they still have spine calvate they have a maybe new one that's called soldier by Megan Mogwai but anyway the spine the spine one that I'm playing right now is still as strong as ever and it's even got a, a couple of new tools that help propel it you know, everything else got like a lot of whole bunch of buffs here and there, especially like Skoatal. Uh and Nilfgaard needed a little bit of something more to keep it competitive. And they got exactly that in uh, one one particular combo and then as this card called Assassin. Now, this card Assassin is probably one of my favorite cards uh, in Nilfgaard right now. So basically what it does is, is it allows it will damage a unit by its base strength. So for example, if I put next to that, uh, the seven strength for day and night, it'll do the seven strength, but if it gets boosted up to nine, it's only going to do seven. Uh, it seems kind of initially weak a little bit. Uh, and this is, this weakness is especially pronounced against decks like, uh, Northern realms. I'm pretty sure Northern realms who they have generally a lot of low strength units that get buffed up a lot, especially with like full test, right? As soon as full test goes down, you're not going to be killing anything. So the <laughs> assassin pretty much becomes uh, a little bit more than like an Alistair's Thunder, which is not the great thing about assassin is that it will kill the unit. Whereas Alistair's Thunder wouldn't always do that. And it goes up to about 10, 10, right? Yeah, it goes up to, excuse me, it goes up to 10 damage. So, so this is basically the whole game plan. The game plan is just the same as ever, right? You're going to be playing your spies, uh, what's really cool is that Assassin counts as a spy, so that's additional synergy with your Imperial Brigade. And also, Imperial Brigade is now mobile. You can be placed in any row. And the, this uh, this deck that I'm going up against is a... It, it's almost like a, like a... I wouldn't... If you told me that deck was a star deck, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. Uh, because it has these uh, Redinian Knights, which are pretty all-around very good units... It has these new 7 strength buffers that buff uh, a random unit by 1. Went ahead and got rid of it before I started getting buffs off. And then... Oh yeah, and then there's a bunch of armor stuff that you'll see in the third round. <laughs> that I managed to uh, kind of outplay a little bit. So I went first here, so obviously I'm always going to be at a constant disadvantage, which is kind of unfortunate. I've actually been going first a lot lately. Just kind of like a little, you know, bias, but I feel like I swear it's been like 80, 90 percent, 80 to 90 percent. So this is where things kind of get complicated because uh, now my assassin, my assassin is effectively useless, right? Uh, because if I try and hit that seven strength unit with a five armor, it's going to do two damage overall, right? Because I'm pr I'm I'm actually not certain on that, but I'm 99 percent sure it does not uh, ignore armor, although that would be cool, but maybe a little bit too powerful. So yeah, and I don't really have much of an opportunity to pass at any point. And that's very unlucky too. Just as a quick note, uh, you definitely do not want to pick Yakim here because uh, Calvate shoots you the top three cards on your deck and the first one's Yakim, right? And then Yakim pulls the next one, which is going to be Roach. So I'd Yakim into Roach, which would be terrible. And obviously I can't pull Roach, so the next best option is... Uh, Maureen, even though I did set up, I did set up Menno to hit uh, this Redinian Knight, luckily for me. Uh, otherwise, it only would have hit that one strength <laughs> spine unit, which would have been terrible. At least in, that's what uh, this nine strength. I don't remember what he's called. This nine strength uh, toggle spy guy is so damn good because of this interaction with Menno. And I actually I need to get a I really want to showcase this combo in like a Gwen Academy kind of thing and showing off like <laughs> you can like pick off like a 20 strength target with. Uh, you know, this this relatively easy to pull off two card combo. It's really crazy. So this is kind of like the general uh, idea you want to go for when you're using these nine strength spy guys, uh, token spy guys, alternate token spy guys, whatever. Uh, I don't know if there's actually a use to use it on your own, except to take away the spy status on like a uh, Cantarella in the, in the mirror matchup so they can't destroy with Menno. But otherwise, you're going to be looking to hit your opponent spying. Oh, and also... Once it hits spying, it also affects Imperial Brigade, so there's even more synergy with that card. In fact, Imperial Brigade, like, it's a, is that like a... 
if it's not reveal Novgorod, do you ever not play Imperial Brigade? Interesting. Yeah, I feel like Imperial Brigade's even more, like even more powerful than it's ever been with all these new uh, abundance energies. And of course, Joachim such a strong card. I initially really disliked him because of his uh, innate randomness. But as you as you play Novgorod a lot and you kind of design the deck around him, he, it's a lot less random than you actually might initially uh, experience. So this is all, you know, going, this is all, all these spying units are all feeding to this Imperial Brigade, which is obviously 24 strength. I really want to be able to pull into more, but I'm actually unable to, which is really unfortunate. And then there comes the Igni, of course. <sighs> Again, hit by Igni is so demoralizing. And like, I actually started to get to the point where I might have had the opportunity to pass on him. And not and make him go two cards down because I'm this whole time I'm just looking to get a uh, and since I went first I'm just kind of looking for the opportunity and he plays his, his three buffing units I'm looking for a way out of this round without actually like him going into the next round on even cards if at all possible so I'm trying to look for my high tempo plays to get out of this round as soon as possible I have a lead but if I pass now he caught he easily catches up in one card and then <clears throat> we go into round two uh. Four cards a four card, which is not good, obviously. So the next best thing is to try to super out tempo him with something like uh Vilger Forge, which is what I'm looking to do, especially since he played the low tempo play in the other dude. Oh I oh yeah, that's another really cool thing. So this guy got a buff. He buffed from uh I think he used to do five damage, now he does seven damage on his first hit. So uh, and instead of buffing himself by two, he buffs himself by four if he destroys something. So this got a huge buff. Wait, is that right? Wait, does his base stats get nerfed and then... Wait. I think Because I'm, I'm pretty sure nine strength is what he always used to be at once he killed something. So I guess they maybe nerfed his base stats but increased the, the buff to actually destroying unit, which makes sense. That's a pretty good trade-off, I would say. So anyway, so by sending the spying unit uh token or toggle to one of these seven strength units i can now hit this do the seven strength and get the boost good stuff an initially unimpressive card this nine strength spy uh toggler but once you factor in all the different synergies you have with all the other cards in the set it quickly becomes apparent that it's a, a must have and at its very worst it's a nine strength unit nine strength bronze which is pretty good Although that's somewhat a result of uh, the power creep in this patch, but that's that's for another time. Uh, so slight correction, I did say like I wanted to try and you know use explosive tempo to get off and of this round, but I had a very good opportunity to kill the seven strength thing while I was still uh, unbuffed. And now I'm looking to get set up my Vilga Force target because I don't want to hit like the four strength throat because I'm losing out on two strength. So if I set up this uh this two strength guy here, this Kalak, and then I can go into the Vilga Force a little, a little bit more smoothly. Although it may have been better to just try and to use the Vilga Force one turn early. Cause that that uh that raw tusher isn't doing a whole lot, but then again, the raw tusher is not going to be doing much at all anyway. That that's actually one notable uh, downside of the assassin card because it's a one strength uh, spying unit. Uh, it blocks your uh, your raw your cow carcasses. Whereas before, like uh, ambassadors, you could line up like three or so ambassadors on the same row alongside some other units that are for two strength. So by this point, he has to give up because he's going to lose 10 strength. He'd go 27 strength down. That Wait, does he not? Okay, yeah, he plays all there. Yeah, he gives it up. All right, but that was not the point of this VOD review. That was just to kind of showcase. This is almost like a live gameplay of new Nilfgaard, and it's brilliant. It's still a little bit weak. It... It sometimes lacks a little bit of raw power in certain situations, but I think with more creative usage, with more time played on it, I think it can...
be tier one if it's not already an easy tier one. The meta is still you know shaking down. I don't want I don't want to get you know too crazy. Another cool combo that you can use with uh, Kintarella and Meno. Uh, if you're going first and you have Cantarella and Minnow in your opening hand, you play Cantarella, right, going first. So you play the spy on their, their side. Uh, and if they're unaware of Meadow, or if they don't think you're running it or whatever, if you're just trying to get out of the round or whatever because you're going first, they'll pass. And then you play Meno and you take the round and one card down. It's good stuff. And going one card down to win the first round uh, when you're sitting around 10 cards is always worth it. It's barely like half a card by that point. So this is a really weird play, and I actually was like, "Why did he play uh, DJ?" <laughs> the subreddit called him DJ Extra, so I'm just gonna call it that. Why did he? Why is he playing DJ Extra so early? Right? This is the kind of like late game, like last card of your uh, of your hand that you play at the very end of the game, and it's like, why? Why is he doing this? Why is he playing it so early? And then we see why in a moment. Well, roughly why. I would agree with him based on the result, but still, that's a really powerful card that just kind of gave up. But it makes sense. So my hand is looking really weak here, right? So I have a, a dead ass here, basically, which is just 10 strength. I have a Peter, which isn't which I thought was <laughs> I, already, I already spoiled it, which I thought was unlikely to get any value off except for maybe like three. Uh, I mean, eight in total. Uh, an Imperial Brigade that will go up to eight. And then a possible Rot Tosser, right? Okay, so we place Troll Low. Troll Low is actually surprisingly great. I've been, I've been seeing a lot of Troll Low lately, and I'm seeing it being comboed to their cards within the Northern Realm faction. And it's incredible because, like, it's an 11 trade uh, silver card that's, like, that's pretty weak, right? Uh, but because it gains four armor every single turn, it just quickly spirals out of control with all the the synergy you can go for. I'm just kind of looking here to see if oh, they changed the they fixed the bug where you couldn't pre you previously couldn't see which card belonged to which gra graveyard. Now they have the glowy borders around them. So red your enemy cards will have the red borders. Your own cards will have the blue borders. It's really good, good stuff. Glad they fixed that. Much needed. So it's quickly becoming apparent that he's uh, trying to set up, or at least you can guess he's trying to set up the, um, I can't remember the name. I think it's called like Light Calvary, something like that. So it's pretty obvious he's trying to set something like this up and he's getting, he's letting his troll a little, trying to uh, get as much armor as possible before he actually pulls the trigger. So now from my perspective, what am I thinking, right? Uh, I This is where like, no, like no, mostly knowledge and slightly wisdom comes in handy. So I have the knowledge that I know he's going to play that card that uh, takes both of their armor and then adds it to its own, right? So I don't want to play Peter. I'm keeping Peter. Now, do I want to play Rod Tosser? Rod Tosser is a possibility, but generally speaking, if you're, if you're trying to get like the absolute most value you can out of Rod Tosser, you want to wait a little bit longer just in case they have some way to deal with it. And honestly, this is where my knowledge is actually lacking because I can't remember off the top of my head if Northern Realms has, or at least in this current iteration, Northern Realms has a way to deal with a uh, Rod Tosser. <clears throat> and potentially I could have played it a little bit earlier and maybe it would have forced his hand to play a would have forced his hand to play a bad play um, but also this gives me more chance to see if uh, if there's a better target for me to rot tosser because see if I if I let the timer run out or the card card run out this gives me more opportunities to pick the ones I want to pick instead of let, allowing him to have more time to play around it I think the higher EV play is to wait but in this particular instance, playing it earlier would have been better, I think. Oh, it actually doesn't gain four armor returns, two armor return, I guess, on that troll little. So he plays that potion, gets them both armor. Play my rod tosser because uh, rod tosser won't go off if I wait any longer. At least I think that's how it works. No, I always get confused with turn timers. I, I generally play it safer than sorry, rather than be sorry. 
So there it is. There's the big unit. And like this combo is so insane, right? He Wait, does he only take armor from one? I thought he used to take armor from two. That's kind of sad. I guess because they felt the armor arch archetype was too strong. Or maybe what they did is they they buffed his base strength so that uh it roughly when he only takes one it's a more stable outcome, but there's a lower ceiling but also a higher floor. What did I kind of get? But still, it would have been pretty pretty crazy if he grabbed two of those. I actually would have lost if he grabbed that guy's armor as well. So I'd just reset him. Take away 12 of that strength, plus three. And then Rot Toss hurts for a little bit extra. Good stuff. New Nilf card, man. It's great. And the whole point was to say, um, the particular point that I wanted to make is recognizing what you're going up against and uh, the mechanics of your play order. So this was entirely, you didn't need wisdom at all. You didn't need to make any like particularly predictive or critical uh, thinking plays. You just had to think, okay, I know what this guy is generally playing and I know generally the order that I'm supposed to play things. In. And it seems like very straightforward and simple. Like, of course you say Peter for last, right? But I, I 100% would have lost this game if I used Peter any sooner than the very last play. And also this, uh, this funnels into card advantage, right? So I won the first round, and then I played Kentarell in the second round, which doesn't matter. It just cancels out. I won the first round, and I won it on one card down, and then going to round three because I forced him to play one card. He has to go first in round three, which gives me the last day, which gives me Peter. So if I did not have card advantage here, if I lost round one, uh, I would have lost the whole game very it's, it's like it seems like oh yeah confidently one but actually like things had just barely gone right for me to pull this off and also what if i didn't even have peter oh this is another thing so almost all of my games i'm actually getting to the point where i have zero cards left in my deck that's how effective this uh this nerf card uh, archetype is at thinning in their deck and playing other cards and ye who plays the most card wins the game good stuff New Nilf card, man. So good. I love it. So many new archetypes to explore. And I'm really excited to try out that Northern Realm Armor one. I'll probably have a VOD review up that here pretty soon.